You know, AstraZeneca have taken the opinion that working with governments and with local NGOs is the way to accomplish things in parts of the world that are less privileged. And so they've chosen to work not only on the development of new drugs for tuberculosis, which is their main activity in this area, but to partner with AMREF, the African Medical and Research Foundation, which is the biggest of Africa's health and development organizations. And that NGO is their partner for this project in Uganda. And so they have worked both with the NGO community in the local situation, but also with the government in achieving an enormous amount to deal with the uh, activities around AIDS, TB and malaria over the last five years in Uganda. At AstraZeneca, uh, we define forward as working with communities NGOs and with governments, that tripartite, powerful, collaborative partnership. AstraZeneca moved into this area because they had been involved with developing TB drugs, and yet they saw that the powerful addition of malaria to the normal practice of bringing TB and HIV together would be additive and more helpful. And so they worked with AMREF, who were local NGOs, um, to find out from government what exactly they wanted. And at that time, Uganda had just been through a terrible war, and the conflict in Uganda had left something like 6,000 orphans in this particular area of Uganda. Many of the parameters they were working on were appallingly low. So about 50% of those who had HIV were TB, uh, with, who had TB were HIV positive. Many people weren't receiving treatment. About 38% of those put on TB treatment completed it. And malaria, many cases were undiagnosed and many children under five were dying of malaria. And into that space came this new collaboration with the government to provide 11 new laboratories in the areas, laboratories that could diagnose these conditions, and then village health teams, which were able to provide care at the community level. And training those community health teams was a major gain of this project, which has been left beyond the project to the strengthening of health care in that particular, in the two areas of Uganda. So, I think probably the strength was working through government systems, improving what was already there, and making sure that the local NGO who knew how to work in Uganda um, were at the front. And AMREF, uh, the African Medical and Research Foundation, did a brilliant job of coordinating things on the ground with huge support from uh, AstraZeneca. I happen to be a professor of tropical medicine, so I've committed most of my life to health in underserved areas and um, have worked in Papua New Guinea and in two different parts of Africa for about 20 years. So I'm totally sold on the need of people who have less than we do. And someone once challenged me saying, why not the question isn't why do you want to go and work there but is there any good reason why you shouldn't and i think that puts the contrast that that it gives us an opportunity to work with people who have less than us and to contribute to their development and i think more and more it's dealing with the issues of poverty that many of the people we serve have under a dollar a day find it very difficult to eke out a living. And if you can get them up onto the rung of the ladder, which allows them to develop their own businesses, things would be very different. But at the moment, I think the huge challenge for the business and the lay community 
is to get out there and help because there's lots to help in and um, they have very few resources to to manage those conditions. So I've certainly spent most of my working life uh, working with tropical problems. I think that firing up young people to have that same interest is one of the things I enjoy now. And uh, of all the things that I'm doing at the moment, the one that appeals to me most is that we have 32 million people now living in Africa with HIV. And largely, those people are stigmatized, poor, they've lost their job, they can't send their children to school, and they come back to the hospital every month where the hospital congratulate them on doing a great job. But the next 30 days, they've got to live in poverty in their communities. And the big challenge is how do we, in the affluent parts of the world, help to deal with that great inequity? And I think it's largely a matter of building their self-esteem. So how can you help people who are living with the virus, but now living very successfully with antiretrovirals, get back into the community and be part of the solution rather than being considered the problem. That's a big challenge at the moment. I think some of the volunteer programs are very successful, allowing employees to go and help. And I think there are a number of initiatives like that. I know, well, I won't name the organizations, but there are several that have um, placement possibilities for three to 12 months. And that's an enormous gift of skills in areas that can help. I think young people need to experience it. Most people who go and spend time working in a less resourced place find themselves greatly attracted to go back. And I think that if they can make sense of what they're doing to be useful in a community like that, they become very energized and hugely energetic at, at getting things done and making friends with people of different cultures, which is not always easy in other environments. Yeah. One opportunity that I think we have is that charity and uh, philanthropy seems to operate by different rules. When you get big industry and, and pharma, they are based on research. But when they become philanthropic and giving money away to causes, they often don't prove that what they do works. So I would really encourage major philanthropic efforts to spend more on proving that the good things they're doing actually make a difference. And I think that takes a lot of resources to do that, but it's worth doing because actually the governments would like to implement some of the benefits that are being innovated by, by big business. And they can't do that unless there's an evidence base. And I think it might be really helpful if there became a culture of developing an evidence base for philanthropy, philanthropic uh, activities. In terms of of building self-esteem. Some of the talk we, we had earlier this morning touched on this, but I think there are many people know what's wrong. They just don't know how to deal with a situation in their community. And building self-esteem is an important part of the public health uh, paradox that, that people need to feel good about themselves to be able to do good. And so, I think perhaps it's, it's an area that will be a growing area of concern is that we want to transfer the philanthropic impulse to people in less resourced places so that they're part of the solution themselves.